Today, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This afternoon, we're in Tampa as the Pittsburgh Steelers try to keep their playoff hopes alive, and little did they know the weather in Florida would make them feel right at home. It's been incredibly cold for this part of the country. As you can see, blankets, the mode of operation this afternoon. The temperature at game time, 39 degrees. Windy conditions as well, and that wind chill, chill at 20 degrees. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Tampa. I'm Joel Myers alongside Paul McGuire, and season's greetings to all of you from all of us at NBC. The Pittsburgh Steelers, Paul, started the season out at 0-2, outscored 92-10. to No one could have expected them to be in the position they're in right now. Everybody gave up on the Pittsburgh Steelers except the fans at Pittsburgh and the Pittsburgh team. I mean, they really did. Bobby Brister, they don't like to make excuses, but Bobby Brister said to us some 10 or 12 weeks ago, look, when you don't have the same offensive line week in and week out, you just can't do the things offensively that you want to do. And that was the biggest problem. Brister... The Steelers are back. The Steelers definitely are back. The offensive line's consistency, one of the biggest reasons. They've taken now four of their last five. They're looking for their third straight win. Tim Worley has really come on. Isn't it interesting, though, but over 10 weeks ago when we talked to Bubby Brister, Bubby said if Tim Worley, if he can gain 100 yards or close to 100 yards a game, we will win. In the last five weeks, Bubby Brister has not thrown a touchdown pass, and it doesn't matter to him as long as they win football games, Joel. Has had such a phenomenal run over the last five games, over the last four in particular. He's averaged 91 yards a game, and I guess Bubby Brister put it best when we were talking to the Steelers quarterback. He said, Worley is comfortable, he has confidence, and he knows the system. You can see the difference over the last four, as opposed to his first 11. His last four, he's outdone his total output from the backfield, as opposed to the previous 11. A young man from Georgia, the first round draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers won the opening coin toss. John Carney, former kicker at Notre Dame, kicking off to the leader in the AFC. In kickoff return, second of the NFL, Rod Woodson with a 26.4 yard average. So here we go. Igwe Buike, not Carney, will kick it away. I wanted a short one taken to the 11. Woodson gets a block to the outside. Sensational return for the Steelers. What a start for Pittsburgh today. Still on his feet. Woodson inside the 20. Dragged down from behind to the 17-yard line. Rod Woodson. Second in the NFL. Tops in the AFC. And what a shot in the arm to get things underway for Pittsburgh. A 72-yard return. Just take a look at what Tampa Bay does, oh, Joel. They, they go to the middle of the field. Nobody stays on the outside. Aaron Jones, number 97. Look at the block. He just stays with his block, and he helps Worley pick up the extra yardage that he needs. With that block, he picks up 13 more. And they have two Tampa Bay Buccaneers down on the field. One of the injured bucks down there that they're attending to right now is Ricky Reynolds, their starting cornerback, who has four interceptions. One of their leaders in the secondary. What a blow that would be for Tampa Bay. They're already missing their starting quarterback today. If you haven't heard the news, Vinny Testaverde was placed on the injured reserve list. Joe Ferguson will get the start for the Buccaneers. Injuries have really caught up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially in the offensive line over the last four to five weeks. Now this offensive line finally healthy for the last seven straight games with the Pittsburgh Steelers and their right tackle named to the Pro Bowl. Tun Jokin, one of the best pass blockers in the NFL, protecting Bobby Brister, Worley in the backfield, along with Merrill Hodge, a very consistent group now in the backfield for Pittsburgh. When they go to their spread offense, the extra wide receivers come in. And due to the injury to Rodney Carter, who just went on IR, Dwight Stone and Mark Stock will be the two in there. Pittsburgh fans normally would see Rodney Carter coming out of the backfield. Let's look again at the Ricky Reynolds injury on that kickoff return. I just remember Ricky Reynolds is the starting left corner, and he's limping. His left ankle just folds underneath him when Woodson cuts back, and that's what caused it. First and 10 give. It's Merrill Hodge. Inside the 15. Gain of about four to the 13 yard line put down by Eugene Marr. So that was a 72 yard return for Rod Woodson. 
his longest so far this season an 84 yarder we saw Paul at Pittsburgh against the San Diego Chargers for a touchdown you bet it was a great run just a world class sprinter you just can't let him to get outside there's the defensive front seven will try to slow down Pittsburgh today Tim Worley banging it near a first down inside the eight close to the seven yard line may just be inches short about a foot short short that first down marker and Paul of my lips seals shut from the weather you'll have to pry them open this afternoon <laughs> we're in a wind tunnel up here we are so high above the stadium and the wind is just blowing in here it's crazy when they go to their dime alignment these are the changes they'll make they'll bring in their number one draft choice Broderick Thomas along with Futrell and Elder joining the regulars in the secondary Reynolds Jones Robinson and Harry Hamilton Right now, Futrell is starting, though, due to the injury to Ricky Reynolds. On third and short, Worley cutting it back, gets the first down inside the six-yard line. Good recognition by Worley. They had strung out the play. He cut it back in the nick of time and picks up that first down. I think one of the interesting things yesterday, we were talking to Bubby Brister, and you asked him, we said, Bubby, wouldn't you like to start this game with, you know, throwing a little trick play or a pass play? He started laughing. He said, I would like to, but you know, Chuck Knoll, we will run on first we will run on second and we will run on third and that's exactly what they've done first and goal the Steelers started with it after that great return to 17. this is Merrill Hodge on the trap play inside the five to the two yard line Marv tripping him up along with John Ken in the left tackle thought it was interesting when we asked him we'll get to that in just a second but great offensive line play over the last five weeks continues in the early going today Dawson Rainstra and long they just go right up the middle and the hole is open and Hodge is there they're inside the two yard line Bobby Brister told us last week in the game against the New England Patriots which they won 28 to 3 they went to the line of scrimmage and called the plays and the Patriots picked up on them finally towards the fourth quarter but they still couldn't stop them second and goal just inside the two yard line early movement no flags Worley plowing ahead he's in touchdown Steelers it looked like Merrill Hodge may have lifted up a little bit early, but the Steelers will take it. Joel, this Pittsburgh Steelers team, and we're talking to Tampa Bay yesterday when you talked to their linebackers. Uh, Urban Randall was sitting there talking about it. He says, there's no surprises with Pittsburgh. They're going to trap you. They're going to run right at you. They line up. Now, just watch when the guards are pulling. There's the trapping right in the middle of the line. Dawson, Raystra, and Long, they just trap in the middle. No surprises with this team. Gary Anderson, perfect on the extra point. An exceptional start for the Pittsburgh Steelers thanks to that great return by Rod Woodson. They've got a 7-0 lead at Tampa. for the holidays. There's no better beer to have around than Michelob. Look for our tree at your store and have a happy holiday. Another Pontiac First is ready for delivery. The first four-door version of Grand Prix style and performance. The new Grand Prix sports sedan. You've got to drive it. Get on the Pontiac and ride. Pontiac ride. The exciting new four-door Grand Prix You've got to check it out. Rebuild excitement. Now get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's All Out Excitement Closeout. Stuffing. Mr. Scrooge loves the new stuffing and the five piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Stuffing. With five pieces of the Colonel's chicken and two buttermilk biscuits, all for only $4.99. Perfect for the two of us. Heavens, it's the Cratchits. Tied the stuffing. We brought the 10 piece holiday meal. With four Biscuit and more stuffing. Just $9.99. I like the way you think, Cratchit. Get the five or ten piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Two minutes and 49 seconds into the contest, Tim Worley, the rookie running back from the University of Georgia, has given the Pittsburgh Steelers a 7 0 lead. Look at the wild card scenario now for the Steelers. They've got to win today to have any kind of shot at all. Then they need the Bengals, the Raiders, and the Colts all to lose. If that scenario developed, then the Steelers would play the Oilers in Houston in the AFC wildcard game. Teams that are already in 
Denver, Cleveland, Buffalo to that can control their own destiny in the AFC, Indianapolis and Cincinnati. Those that will be keeping up with the other scores, the Raiders, the Chiefs, the Steelers, of course, Houston and Miami. Anderson kicking it away. It'll be taken by the up man. That'll be Sylvester Stamps across the 20 to the 25-yard line. He'll say his knee was down at the 24, put down there by David Arnold. Now the two teams getting into it very early. These two teams shouldn't have that much of a rivalry. This is only the fourth meeting in the history of the series. The last get-together was in 1983. Pittsburgh has taken the previous three. When it's this cold, you don't need an excuse to fight with somebody. When, when somebody steps on your toe, look out. The offensive lineup, big offensive line. A couple of starters for the first time today. Bax and Bruin, the two guards getting starts today for the first time this year for the Buccaneers. Ferguson, his second start this season. Replacing the injured Vinny Testaverde, and they go to their shotgun offense. The extra wide receivers, Drury and Peebles. First and ten give. It goes to Lars Tate. Hard runner across the 27 to the 28-yard line. Tate in his second year from Georgia. Let's get an update now from Bob Costas and NFL Live. All right, Joel, you had the long punt return by Rod Woodson of the Steelers to set up a touchdown. This one by Dave Meggett, the sensational giant rookie, goes all the way, 76 yards against the Raiders. Count the broken or slipped tackles, three, four, four or five of them at least, and he goes all the way, 76 yards for the touchdown, 7 nothing Giants. If they win, they clinch the East. All right, Bob, thank you. Second and six situation. This time it's James Wilder trying the left side. Not too much deception in the early going from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Short yardage up to the 29 near the 30. It'll bring up third and still close to five. Ninth year out of the University of Missouri. Injured Pittsburgh Steeler is down. Hopefully it's not David Little. Is that number 50? The umpire blocking us out. And David Little who calls their defensive signals. Front seven for the Steelers have they ever come together especially that group of linebackers even though they had that injury to Hardy Nickerson just about seven weeks ago and Nickerson back in the lineup you'll be able to see some spot duty today but they are getting to the quarterback with regularity now when they go to their dime package the extra defensive backs come in an extra down lineman as well a good pass rusher and Aaron Jones extra D backs Larry Griffin and Delton Hall Joel, the one thing about this team, we're talking to Bubba yesterday, Brister said that, you know, the thing that's made this team win four out of the last five is the defensive football team. They said they have just played superb football, and it's nice giving credit to the defense by the offense. But keep in mind, as we said at the top of the show, the fact that Brister has not thrown a pass in the last five games. It's a touchdown pass in the last five games, and it really doesn't bother him. He said, I would like to. But we'll take a win any way we can get it. He really is a total team player. 98 Gerald Williams, the nose tackle, is the injured Steeler down. Sitting up, hopefully, maybe he just took a shot where he had his win knocked out. The Eagles need a victory for a wild card. And if the Giants lose, of course, then the Eagles could ultimately win the division if they win their game against the Phoenix Cardinals and Green Bay. In dire straits, need a, needing a victory as well. Now, Green Bay wins and Minnesota loses on Monday. Then Green Bay will win the NFC Central. You Just know, a few possibilities this weekend. Oh, yeah, and we'll get to all of them by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the amazing thing about Pittsburgh, though, they have to look at three teams that have to lose. And we talked to them about, I mean, the concentration level. Do you worry about what these other teams are going to do? They don't have to worry about it because Cincinnati does not play till tomorrow night, no matter what the other two teams do today. Lorenzo Freeman takes over the nose tackle position on third and four, a long four Ferguson with his first pass of the day over the middle. It's complete. Taken in by Sylvester Stamps out of the backfield for a first down, down to the 48 of the Steelers, a 22-yard reception to Stamps. What happens is Stamps, he gets behind David Johnson, number 44. Right at, right at the bottom of your screen, you see David Johnson. Now watch what Stamps does. Once he gets behind him, Ferguson throws a perfect pass. Johnson has no chance to get to the ball. Stamps does. Joe Ferguson told us yesterday, at the end of the year, he'll decide about next season. He's the oldest player in the NFL at 39. He'll turn 40 this coming April. They give the Lars Tate huge hole. There he goes into the secondary, and he may be gone. Pulled down from behind by the linebacker Brian Hinkle 
At the 20 yard line, Lars Tate. Another product of the University of Georgia. Tate working for the Buccaneers and Worley for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Joel, the hole was beautiful when Tate went to the hole to his left, to the right of the screen. You're going to see the hole open up, and I think it's John Bruin, number 69, who is the right guard that pulls out and makes the hole there. He seals back to the inside, and then look at Tate. There's a missed tackle by Thomas Everett, number 27, but then Hinkle makes the play. Tate waving his way out of the backfield. Does a good job just to get to the line of scrimmage. As the Steelers strung it out with the short side of the field extremely well on the defensive side. Tate had a 29 yard carry on that long run down to the 21 yard line. One thing though about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the last seven weeks they really haven't had any continuity on their offensive line due to injuries and they don't have one regular in their backfield averaging at least four yards a carry. You know and Ray Perkins was talking about it. People don't want to listen to injury woes. The Pittsburgh Steelers had him at the beginning of the year. You saw what happened to them. The same thing has happened to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the last four or five games. Second and 10 of the 21. This drive started all the way back at the 24. Former Missouri Tiger James Wilder slips down on his own, gets back up and lunges for about three. Down to the 18-yard line, where he's hit by David Little, the inside linebacker. Well, when you, when you run wide, you hope the corners will stop. Osowski, number 92, watch what he does. He doesn't get caught up in the line, Joel. He goes along the line of scrimmage. As he's going along, Bruin tries to block him. He gets away, gets into the play, gets the tackle along with David Little, number 50. You hate to see a player go down, but the Steelers found they did have a player in Osowski when Hardy Nickerson went down. So when David Little decides to call it a career and he's in his ninth year now, they know they've got two very good linebackers in Nickerson and Jerry Olsowski from the University of Pittsburgh. Third and seven, Ferguson short arms it and it's complete. His favorite target, Mark Carrier. Carrier, third in the NFL in receptions, has the first down. Had to wait a long time to get to it. You're going to see something a little unusual here because Cur Courier, as, he, as he's in the sideline, what happens is the guy that's going to end up over there to the right is Hinkle. And Hinkle is a linebacker. He is not covering Carrier by any means, but he has the short zone. He just didn't get out far enough. Many in South Florida upset that Carrier was not named one of the four wide receivers on the Pro Bowl. He told us yesterday it's everyone's goal to make it, but he doesn't worry about it because it's something he has no control over. Where does he deserve it? First and goal at the eight-yard line. They send Hill in motion. Working out of the eye, Tate has it. Tries to slide to the outside. He gets a yard, yard and a half just inside the seven, close to the seven-yard line, where he's tripped up by Brian Hinkle. The thing that happens on a day like today, and it's cold, they, everybody said that Pittsburgh has the home field advantage because of the weather here. But you can't arm tackle people. You've got to get your body squared up, and you've got to take them on in the pads. You can't be reaching out. It's so cold, you really don't have that much feeling in your fingers, so you better get your shoulder pads on them. We said to Chuck Noll when he met with us yesterday, a little cold here in Florida, Chuck. He said, this is the tropics for us. <laughs> Second and goal, just outside of the seven-yard line. Tate and Howard, the tandem in the backfield, and Ferguson will put it up top, and it's deflected at the line. It falls incomplete. He wanted to go to the tight end, Ron Hall, but it was knocked down to the line of scrimmage. He would have had Ron Hall, but only for about a two- or three-yard gain because the linebackers were sitting back there it was a poor choice, but he had no other choice to make. What a career it's been, and you saw him operate for so long in Buffalo where you make your home, Paul. Yeah, he, and he talks the most memorable thing is the O.J. Simpson 2,000-yard game, but here it comes now. Joe's just trying to just a little little teeny flip pass, and it's someone on the inside, and I, I don't know if it was Lorenzo Freeman or not. Ferguson will call the signals out of the shotgun on third and goal outside of the seven-yard line. He's got four wide receivers working. Pocket holds up well. Over the middle, out of the hands of Carrier, and a flag goes down. Defending on the play, it was Rod Woodson, the cornerback, pleading his case now. Well, I think what they're they're calling holding on Rod Woodson, it seemed like Courier was too far out in front of him to have a chance to hold. We're going to see it here. Goes Courier's going across the middle. Roots is behind. Now, that's where the hold is. He's got him by the back of the shirt. It's a good call by the official. Outstanding call. So, holding. automatic Number first down. defense, first down. 
Referee today's Jerry Seaman. So the Buccaneers on their first possession of the afternoon putting together a very impressive drive mixing up the pass and the run effectively. They started with the ball at their own 24 yard line. Third down conversions and they are so important. And Ferguson hit a big one on that reception on third and seven to get it down to the eight yard line to make it first and goal in the reception by Mark Carrier. This is forwarded. I can't tell yet. Zero degrees. Pitch goes to Lars Tate. They turn it inside. Rod Woodson made the play. Everett came over to help out, but Woodson really turned it in. And it's a loss of about three back to the seven. Rod Woodson making the play. And what he does is he stays to the outside. And as long as you stay to the outside, you're going to have some help inside. Watch this. The blocker's coming out, Howard, to block on him. Now watch what Woodson does. He stays outside. Now he forces Tate inside. Everett is there. And Woodson also makes a tackle. It's beautiful. You can't play defense better than that. Woodson turns it in, and you see 27 knifing through. He is fearless out of the secondary. Thomas Everett. Mr. Torpedo. I'll tell you, he, he took on Christian Okoye about six times in the game we did up there. Second and goal near the seven-yard line. In the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Mark Carrier. His eighth touchdown reception of the year. Gives you an idea why this young man should be in the Pro Bowl. He has all the numbers. He is what they use. They double team him, and watch what happens. He goes to the inside. There's Woodruff there. There's Everett there. The pass by Ferguson was absolutely perfect. It's touchdown. So Pittsburgh shocked Tampa Bay with a long return in the early score. The Buccaneers very methodically, though, moved down 76 yards. Igwe Buike gets it through. And it's all even in Florida. The touchdown pass to Mark Carrier, a seven yarder from Joe Ferguson, and it's tied at seven. You hear the thunder, thunder, the call of the road. Moving quick and with purpose. That's the whole idea behind Pontiac's newest Grand Prix. Introducing the first Grand Prix ever with four doors. The new Grand Prix Sports Sedan. Now get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's All Out Excitement Closeout. It wasn't too long ago when an American car here in Switzerland would make people look up in surprise. Not anymore. Oh, I wouldn't say they're all over the place, but GM sells a lot of cars over here these days. Good cars at good value. I should know, this is my dealership right here. GM exports more cars around the world from North America than any other car manufacturer. It's 32 degrees, and Jan Trumpeter is learning all about her antifreeze the hard way. What is this happening to me? Don't push your luck. Guarantee it with advanced formula Prestone. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by New Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? By GMAC the financial services people from General Motors and by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. Welcome back to a very windy and chilly Tampa, Florida. Joel Myers along with Paul McGuire. Little did we know when we came down to Tampa this weekend. I looked at the paper on Thursday. It was about 64, 65 degrees that the Siberian Express would move its way down here. It snowed here last night. A little bit, but it snowed. A 76-yard drive as Igwe Buike gets ready to kick it away for Tampa Bay. I can't wait to listen to you pronounce his name in the fourth quarter. Go. <laughs> Woodson from the 14-yard line for the Steelers. Can he get a block to the outside? He's got such great speed. Didn't get the block. But got good yardage on the return up to the 28-yard line before he's forced out by the defensive end, John Cannon. Phoenix 
trying to shock everyone in the NFL on this final Sunday of the season with an early lead of the Eagles at Veterans Stadium. And the Raiders coming back after that long punt return for the Giants. All even at the Meadowlands. And New Orleans defeating Indianapolis. Good news for Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Steelers have it. Second possession of the day at their own 28. First and 10. Worley getting it on the carry. He goes airborne and flags go to the air as well as he's knocked down at the 30 yard line. Flags are going in the air because it's a tripping penalty on Tampa Bay. Bobby Futrell, number 36. Wait a minute, they're calling us against Pittsburgh. I'll tell you, Bobby Futrell, you cannot put your legs up and trip the ball carrier. And I thought that's where the flag was. Jerry Seaman sending it in the opposite direction, though. They're allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> Personal foul. Illegal crackback. Number 83 offense. Still first down. Lewis Lips. Call it on the wide receiver. Leading receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. Well, Paul, this is my first time calling a game from the Tampa Bay press box, but now I know what you're talking about. Calling a football game from here is like trying to call a game of the Meadowlands from the Empire State Building. You know what's really nice about it, though, here? Because the airport is right next door. You can say hello to people in the planes as they go underneath you. Welcome to Shea Stadium. <laughs> Bobby Briskin throwing to his tight end Malarkey. A first down and then some. Malarkey past the 40-yard line to the 41. The safety's finally caught up to him, Robinson and Hamilton. Do you know the successful teams in the National Football League are teams that really use their tight end? And Malarkey is an excellent tight end. We saw him in a game where he got hurt. But watch where Brister puts this ball. Malarkey gets by the linebacker. Once he does that, that's Eugene Marv, number 99, is one linebacker. And he runs through Irvin Randall, number 54. But once he does that, he picks up speed and gets the first down outside the 40. A 27-yard reception for Malarkey. They give to Merrill Hodge. Good block to the outside. Hodge near the first down marker. All the credit in the world has to go to Terry Long, though, for sealing off that side. You know, this is one of the toughest blocks in the world to make, Joel, is a, is a guard pulling out, and you're moving at top speed, and be able to turn your body back around towards the inside and then move the man away. It opens up the hole for Hodge. That's a beautiful block by Long. Terry Long in his sixth year out of East Carolina. Low center of gravity at 5'11", 275. Nine-yard carry. Second and one. It's Tim Orlier making Merrill Hodge. Has the first down. A gain of about 10 to the 41-yard line. The Steelers have come on so strong over the last four to five weeks, especially on the ground. As you can see, over the first 10 games, they averaged almost 91 yards a game on the ground. 153 now over the last five, and their record obviously indicates their success. And the real number on the bottom, though, tells the story. No injuries on the offensive line. No changes over the last five. First and 10 at the 41 of the Buccaneers. Hodge on the misdirection. Doesn't get much out of it. Spins for a couple to the 39-yard line. Knocked down by Eugene Marr, the inside linebacker from Saginaw Valley. John Cannon, number 78, the left defensive end, who's taking the place of Reuben Davis, made the contact, hit the hole, but did not wrap his arms around. Picks up a yard. That's not bad. Cannon getting that start due to the shoulder injury to Reuben Davis. Could see Davis a little bit later today, but he did not practice at all this week. So Cannon gets the call. Second and long, second and eight. Pocket holding up for Brister, who's going deep. He's looking for a hill just out of his reach. The rookie from Arizona almost got it. He was working against Rod Jones, the cornerback. <laughs> There's no question about Bubby's arm. That ball went 65 yards in the air. And into the wind. Bubby thought he, he would have made the play. His reaction is there. He thought Hill might be able to get it. All he had to do was throw it a little bit further because the cornerback, Rod Jones, number 22, actually fell down. It'll bring up third and long now. Third and so close to eight. Just outside of the 39-yard line. Steelers started with it at their own 28. Brister out of the shotgun with four wide receivers. Has time. Goes up top just out of the reach of Lewis Lips off his fingertips and Lips was available he was open working on Ricky Reynolds who's back in there after that early injury 
You're absolutely right. Ricky Reynolds is covering Lewis Lips and Lips beat him. He ran a what they call a, almost a post quarter. He'll go down and watch what he takes Reynolds. He's running him into the post and then just pulls back, goes to the outside. He is open. The ball's just too high. So Harry Newsom will come in to punt it away. Fourth of the AFC in overall average at 41 yards a try. Willie Drury, former Houston order, waiting back at the Buccaneers 11 yard line. He is hitting it into the wind. Hangs up a high one. Steelers down there but can't get to the ball. Good coverage down there. Mark Stock in particular. But when we return, Tampa Bay has it back at their own 20 yard line. Wouldn't it be great if suddenly you were in charge of the annual swimsuit issue, deciding things like how the models pose and who gets the cover? And wouldn't it be great if the models brought beer? Really great beer, like Keystone, the fresh cold filtered beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. And wouldn't it be great if later that day you all went bowling? Introducing Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? It's big. It's now. It's Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout. Now with our longest-term 4.8% finance rate ever on Grand Prix. That's right. Now every new Grand Prix is available with long-term 4.8% financing. Or get your share of millions in cash back on Grand Prix and almost every other new 1990 Pontiac in stock. But hurry. Your Pontiac dealer is closing out the year with big cash back or 4.8% financing on Grand Prix. It won't last long. See your Pontiac excitement dealer now. choose to finance or lease your new GM vehicle someplace other than GMAC, you might find yourself waiting in line instead of out hugging one. GMAC. Nobody wants to get you into your new GM car or truck faster. New Year's Day. Come home to the best in college football. Kick off your day with the Hall of Fame Bowl. The Southeast Conference co-champion Auburn Tigers, the Giant Killers, battle the high-scoring Buckeyes of Ohio State. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC Sports. The Tampa Bay, Bu Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week embarrassed. And Ray Perkins really felt it. He told us yesterday, they played last, like, last week like they were trying to get me fired. <laughs> They lost to Detroit 33 to 7. He said our bodies were in Detroit, but we weren't there. James Wilder on the first and 10 carry takes it to the 25 yard line. Heard of hand warmers. What about lip warmers? I'm going to tell you right now to solve this whole problem. Just call them Tampa. Don't don't go Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's you're tough. Not, yeah, you're not going to get it. As icicles form on Paul McGuire's mustache. There's there's that's three B's in a row and you can't uh, or two B's in a row and you can't do that. Just go Tampa. They'll understand. Carry a five for Wilder. <laughs> Second and five from the 25. Joe Ferguson picked off three times last week, but he told us that's without any work during the regular practice sessions. James Wilder on the pitch near the first down. As he's down after a gain of four, it'll bring up third and one. Another update now from Bob Costas in NFL Live. All right, Joel, after Dave Meggett brought back that punt 76 yards for a giant touchdown, he fumbled the next punt he tried to handle. The Raiders recovered, and Steve Berline cashes in with his one-yard flip to Ethan Horton. This one's knotted at seven late in the first. Back to Joel and Mr. McGuire. Newfound respect for Paul McGuire. You bet. <laughs> Welcome back to Tampa, where it's all tied at seven. Two tight ends set. For the Buccaneers on third and less than a yard. It's Lars Tate. He's got the first down across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Lars Tate made a great run, and only for a yard, but he made a great run. He, the play was to the right guard over the right guard, and what he did is he hesitated, went back to the left where the hole was. Philadelphia Eagles have tied it up now with the Phoenix Cardinals at Veteran Stadium. And Dallas with a field goal. Tying up Green Bay as the LA Rams also need a victory today and have a three to nothing lead at Foxborough. 
Lars Tate on that last carry has a total of 32 yards now on six attempts. First and ten for the Buccaneers from their own 32. Movement on the line. Flags into the air. A free down for Tampa. Don't tell Sylvester Stamps that, or rather Lars Tate, though. He took quite a shot. Almost no gain on the carry. Maybe about a half a yard. Hardy Nickerson in there. Applying the hit. You know, the one thing that's really amazing about, uh, I know that Tampa has the ball, but but uh, Bobby Brister, you know, we saw him when we did the game when he hurt his knee, only stayed out two games, and now he says there will be there will be no operation. The knee is fine. He's he's happy. He's a throwback. Offside, number 93 defense, still first down. I asked Chuck Noll yesterday if you had a different quarterback, could it have been a little bit different this year? He said everybody rallies around Bobby. That's the way it works around here. All right, there's Keith Willis, number 93, going offside, and again in the neutral zone. Brings up first and five from the 37 of Tampa. Wilder, the only one in the backfield. They double up the wide receivers. The same side. Ferguson running out of time. There's the first sack of the day for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it belongs to the outside linebacker, Greg Lloyd. Jerry Glanville talking about him a few weeks back. Likes his style. And so do the Pittsburgh Steelers. Lloyd is not even blocked. I mean, he'll come from the left-hand side of the screen to watch this. There's a deal on, and then Lloyd comes inside. They just don't go back outside and block. Backs number 75, who is the starting guard, because McHale is hurt. He just didn't move back in. He went with, with the deal from the inside. They came back underneath him. That's his man. Sack number six on the season for Greg Lloyd. A loss of seven yards. Second and a dozen. As they send him in motion. The long count, the delay again. So Hester stands with a big hole across the 35 to the 37. A gain of seven yards on the carry. Yeah, but the man that got the block is the back back there with him. William Howard, number 43, comes in and just makes a super block and opens up the hole. That'll be the final play of the first quarter in Tampa. A must-win situation for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the first sack. Of the afternoon towards the tail end of the first 15 minutes of play. But Stamps making the nice run as we get ready to return to Tampa. Heineken. Amstel Light. This so is much it. better than other beers. It's a great beers. beer. I a mean, delicious European taste. Nothing compares to the smoothness, refreshing, the richness, or the character the distinctive of a flavor Heineken. that cuts through it's your quality thirst. Comes through There's a uniqueness to it. Heineken is America's number one selling imported beer. Amstel Light is America's number one selling imported light beer. Why? Just ask the people who drink them. If you ask me, Amstel Light is the best beer there is. I could go on and say enough about it. It's a light beer. No matter how many beers you thirst. The freedom to say and think what we believe is ensured by this document. Join us in supporting the National Archives celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. Listen to what they're saying about the Hyundai Sonata. The Hyundai Sonata is one of the most powerful cars in its class, road and track. Interior room and trunk space are outstanding. Motor trend. The Sonata has a lot to recommend it. Car and driver. Power, room, value. No wonder the competition's green with envy. The Hyundai Sonata. We're making more sense than ever. Right now, factory-to-dealer incentives can save you hundreds on a new 1990 Sonata. New Year's Day, come home to the best in college football and a rematch of the thrilling 1988 Sunkist Fiesta Bowl. The fifth-ranked Florida State Seminoles battle the Cornhuskers of number six, Nebraska. The Sunkist Fiesta Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC Sports. William Howard, number 43 in the backfield. Watch the block he makes on Hardy Nickerson. That's what I was talking about before. Here it comes. He comes up into the hole right here and then bang. Down he goes, the hole opens up, but they're still short of a first down by about four and a half yards. They'll call it third and five from the 37. Both teams showing the ability to run the ball successfully over the first 15 minutes of play. Movement on the line, no flags into the air though. As Ferguson 
had his receiver fall down a little bit. That was Willie Drury. He lost his footing. And the Bucks will have to punt it away. Delton Hall providing the coverage. When you see a pass play go like that, Joel, when Willie Drury goes down, you, you know that Joe Ferguson is throwing the ball to a spot, not to a man. Both teams successful on the ground. It's the Buccaneers outgaining the Steelers over the first quarter. Chris Moore, a rookie from Alabama, sixth round draft choice, starts the day with a 40 yard average, kicking it to Rod Woodson, the outstanding return specialist for Pittsburgh. Oh, beautiful kick. Great hang time for Moore. Blocks to the outside, though, for Woodson, and a flag down in the play as Woodson goes down as well at the 25 yard line. Donnie Elder, the first one down there. Another altercation. She was separated in a big hurry. A 47 yard punt, but a good five seconds on hang time. That was an absolute beautiful punt, and it just, you know, it did stay up there. The problem was that the Tampa Bay coming down on the play got beyond the Pittsburgh blocker. He tried to get out of the way and couldn't and bumped him in the back. Sheldon. March in the wrong direction if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan as we sort out the situation with referee Jerry Illegal Seaman. Block. During the return, number 24 receiving team. First down. Rodney Carter. Time on the field. Be right back to cold and windy Tampa. It's all even at seven. Enemy on the open. Moving up on your right, Bravo 2. I'm 30 miles from the action. But I'm responsible for a digital communication link between headquarters and brigade. Enemy tank, checkpoint one. If the data isn't programmed right, 5,000 troops could be cut off. Enemy forces together. But I'd never let that happen to my brigade. I'm for it. Is eliminated. Be all that you can be. You did it, sir. Outstanding. Get it your life in the army. If you feel life's more interesting when you make a splash. It's so right here now. If you feel a great beer starts with great water. It's the right beer now. Because you're the kind of person who likes to get to the bottom of things, call for the silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Coors Light, it's the right beer now. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1-900-454-3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere in the USA. Nice of, of Jerry Seaman to be thinking of Rodney Carter on this Christmas Eve. You know how nice it is? Because it's got to be the greatest block that Rodney Carter's ever made because he happens to be on IR and he's in Pittsburgh. Now, that's a, that's a long block. <laughs> it's a long way from home. <laughs> Tight affairs all over the NFL on this final Sunday of the season. Indianapolis, good news for Steeler fans, down by three at the Superdome. Rams are having a tough time. Well, if it's cold in Tampa, I wonder what it feels like in Foxborough. <laughs> and the wind never blows at Sullivan Stadium. You know, the, the way the way these flags are blown and that kick by Moore just now, it, it, the wind does not affect the playing field. This is all circled in, and it just doesn't seem to be any wind down there at all. First and ten. All the way back at the ten yard line. Worley getting a block. Across the 20 for a first down to the 21 yard line. An 11 yard gain. You see the stiff wind of the stiff breeze, but as Paul mentioned, this is an encircled stadium by stands. Well, look at the, those little things wrapped around are the, are the flags on the goalpost, and there's no wind down there. They had ice on them last night. They're frozen stiff. <laughs> First and ten. The ball to the 21-yard line. Good reason they're not blowing in the wind. Too heavy. Brister going for Lips. He's got it. And he gets away. He's gone. Lewis Lips will not be caught from behind. And the Steelers take the lead. Seventy nine yards on the touchdown catch for lips and I think the man he beat was Bobby Futrell but the, you give credit first of all 
to Brister for throwing the ball, but watch what Lips does. Here's Futrell, 36. He just goes up in the air and takes the ball away. Futrell played the ball and not the man. And once Lewis Lips got in the open, I'll do it for you fans in Pittsburgh. Lou, Lou, Lou. Those Lou's in the background <laughs> provided by Paul McGuire. That's right. That Lou's for you. 79 yards on the touchdown. Gary Anderson, true to form on the extra point. Fourth touchdown reception for Lewis Lips, and that is his longest of the entire season. It comes at an opportune time for Pittsburgh Steelers fans. So the Steelers with 1354 left in the first half get the big play the home run as they say and they've got a seven point lead over Tampa Bay. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile Edge, there's nothing else like it. Hey, hustlers, I got some more party time tips for you from Extra Gold Draft. First, never party with anything less than the full tilt taste of Extra Gold. Hey, this is one tough beer. Another tip, never shoot pool with a guy that brings his own stick. And never ever shoot with a guy that brings his own tape. Ask for an extra. Go for the full tilt taste. Nice shot. Thanks. Happy holidays from all of us at Angelsoft and Georgia Pacific. Interstate battery power starts up strong and keeps on going. To find an interstate battery dealer near you, Go on, crank it. Yep, the power back was on and on and on, yeah. The city government is being run by thugs who leave murder in their path. Don't worry, I'll handle that. You're being pursued by an alien nation, and the only way to go is down. Don't worry, I'll handle that. You've got to save America's future, and we're giving you two gorgeous girls to do it with. Don't worry, I'll... Uh... Chameleons is coming Friday. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to sunny Florida. We won't mention the temperature. It's sunny. We got a break there today because it's been raining for the last three or four days as Anderson hits a high one, but a very short one taken by Donnie Elder, the up man. Now he's forced out of bounds near the 34 yard line. Another update now from New York. Let's check in again with Bob Costas. All right, Joel, as you know, it's unseasonably cold in Florida, 39 degrees at Miami, as Jim Jensen catches this early touchdown pass from Dan Marino, gives the Dolphins a 7-0 lead. Then Steve DeBerg comes back, hits Stephon Page, who tumbles in to tie the game at 7. They're early in the second at Joe Robbie, both teams with slim wildcard hopes. Could be a late day around the NFL with all these games so close in the early going. A few overtime affairs, it appears. And welcome back to Tampa. First and 10 of the 33. William Howard getting the start today. His second year from Tennessee. Taking it across the 35 to the 36 for a gain of three yards. If you missed NFL Live, the topics that were discussed. Al Davis joining Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson. Raiders needing their own ballpark. The home stadium for the 90. Sam Weish talking about his drubbing of Houston. And Bobby Beathard. Talking about, I was very surprised because we saw that, we saw NFL Live, that the Cowboys are going to cut their scouting system, Paul, by 50% because Jerry Jones has that much confidence in Jimmy Johnson. That will, that will cut their output by 80%. Lars Tate faking the reverse. It doesn't fool the Steelers, though. Man, it's only a gain of about a yard, yard and a half on the carry. Nickerson and Griffin in on the stop, and don't forget, at halftime, we'll join Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson. For NFL Live with scores and highlights from around the NFL. There'll be some highlights from this game, I'll tell you. Rod Woodson with that long kickoff return, and then the 79 yard touchdown catch for Lewis Lips. That time we watched the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tampa Bay ran a fake reverse, and it just shows discipline on the defense to have your people stay at home. 
Third and five. The bump at 38 of the Buccaneers. Ferguson will work out of the shotgun. Over the middle, in and out of the hands of Bruce Hill. Should have been caught for the first down. Hill could not hang on, though. The second leading receiver in his third year from Arizona State. Joe Ferguson is throwing the ball extremely well. The one he threw away is because his receiver slipped. That was uh, Bruce Hill. Now, Ron, uh, excuse me, Bruce Hill came across this time, and he hits him in the hands, and he drops the ball. The other play was to Willie Drury. Benny Testaverde talking to Joe Ferguson. Testaverde suffering that severe ankle sprain last week against the Detroit Lions in the second quarter. And Joe Ferguson getting the final start of the season. So they signed the former Florida Gator Kerwin Bell for the final game as well. Oh, look at this kick. Very short one. High one. You said the wind didn't have a factor in the kicking game? It I looks think, like it held that one up. I think he just missed the ball. I think Moore just missed the ball. The Steelers will take it with outstanding field position now outside of their own 42 near the 43 when well, we return to Tampa. Steelers get it back leading by seven. If you don't want to slow down on your way to the top. It's the right beer now. Because you know to make a beer as refreshing as a mountain stream, you got to start with a mountain stream. It's the right beer when a night on the town might last all night, call for the taste preferred at better night spots. The silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. You want a deal? Well, here comes the deal. Now get low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just a it's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers on all other models. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This is a deal on a new generation. Oldsmobile. I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Coors Light, pure brewed in the Rockies, the silver bullet won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. Steeler fans, some of the very best in the NFL and many of them making the trek down to Tampa, Florida for this afternoon's matchup. As we welcome you back, Joel Myers, along with Paul McGuire. Lips is the motion man on first and 10 from the 43. And Tim Worley bottled up, going absolutely nowhere after a gain of maybe a yard at the most. Wrapped up by Winston Moss. Giving you abreast of what's developing. Now the Raiders, they need a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Good news for Philadelphia Eagle fans as they're tied right now with the Phoenix Cardinals. But if Philadelphia comes out on top and the Giants are upset at home, the Eagles win the NFC's Eastern Division. Kansas City, as Bob Costas just, just told us, tying things up in Miami where it's a balmy 39 degrees. A lot of ties, a lot of ties. That uh, Raider win would really hurt Pittsburgh. Very much so. Pittsburgh needs some help from the Giants. They also need Indianapolis and Cincinnati to lose. Really hurt Pittsburgh to knock him out. John Rainstrom, the left tackle in his fourth year from Temple, the injured Steeler, being helped off the field. So one thing they emphasized to us in our meeting yesterday, the health of the offensive line over the last seven weeks. In jeopardy right now with Rainstrom taking the seat on the bench. You notice one thing about the benches down here? You don't see any heated ones, do you? Not too many people in this area have overcoats, let alone heated they really, benches. They really don't. <laughs> Craig Wolfley in there on the offensive line now. Second and nine, Brister has time, but the ball is deflected and almost intercepted by Winston Moss. 
Moss can't hang on to it. We'll be right back to Tampa. Let's check in again for another update with Bob Costas in New York. Okay, Joel, the Raiders lead 14-7 at Giants Stadium after Mervin Fernandez makes his 